Thanks, Leslie, for sitting down and talking to us. Thank you so much for your remarks earlier today. Could you tell us a little bit, or could you tell us how ACMA defines digital media literacy? The Australian Communications and Media Authority defines digital literacy as the skills and abilities to participate in the digital economy and also in the network society. In terms of um, breaking, well, to break that down a little bit, um, I suppose digital communications literacy is a subset of, of media literacy, which is the ability to use, um, access, understand, and create and you know, participate in um, media in a variety of contexts. And um, digital media literacy, which is the term that the ACMA uses, or digital communications literacy, which is what we hear about today, um, is a subset, and that's the ability to use, understand, interpret, and create and participate in digital um, communications. And um, if you want, um, should I go on and talk about those in sure, detail? Sure, if yeah. you would, please, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, when we talk about um, access, we also mean being able to, to use and to have, an, have an enough, sort of, I suppose, information um, literacy to be able to find um, you know, content and, and services. And the important thing, of course, is to have some uh, critical understanding and be able to you know, interpret um, what you've found. In particular, I suppose, what's, in, what's important is to, um, to know the differences between various kinds of uh, media, media forms that you might find online and, and what are the most uh, you know, trustworthy of those, um, you know, of, of those sure. media. Um, being able to participate these days in social, social media, being able to um, use online services to create content yourself, um, to be able to uh, transact, you know, do, I suppose, even just a simple thing as doing your, doing your, your banking as well is, is, is a kind of, kind of crea creation, but, but more particularly, I suppose, is, is being able to, um, to be able to sort of post onto, um, you know, post onto a, to a blog, to um, be able to develop your Facebook, you know, page with your, you know, sort of photographs and, um, and, all of the, you know, all of the other attributes of, um, you know, being effectively in, you know, a social, you know, a social network, um, and then particularly for us as a communications regulator, we're import we're very interested in that sort of final um, aspect, which is um, people being able to, you know, understand and to manage the, the risks, um, yeah. you know, online and and be able to um, institute appropriate sort of protections, both for themselves, um, their computers, of course, sure. and uh, also for those who are in their care. And that sort of relates to, I suppose, general issues of cyber security and, and cyber safety. And what sort of programs are you specifically doing in Australia as a regular, regulator to address some of these issues? Well, as a, as a regulator, I, su I suppose um, our, our key concern has, has to be what our role is under, under um, our legislation. Mm -hmm. And there we have um, um, a responsibility for consumer education um, around consumer um, protections, I suppose, and, uh, and safeguards. And we have those in you know, traditional um, you know, broadcast media, but in particular around use of the internet and, and mobile phones. Um, uh, and uh, my area, we, we do um, you know, research, as I, as I sort of explained um, you know, earlier today. And so um, un understanding um, people's knowledge about um, the, you know, the risks that they have when they're, um, you know, for instance, um, undertaking financial transactions or putting out their own um, you know, information online on a you know, social network. Um, is very important so that we can then develop um, more appropriate um, you know, programs so that um, people then know how to um, you know, mitigate that, as I said, mitigate those risks. We do a lot of work in the area of um, cyber, cyber safety research, working with um, 
children and young people and their, and their parents and also some research we do with teachers as well because we've got major programs there to um, then you know, develop uh, resources which will be based on an understanding of, um, of what children and young people are actually um, you know, doing and, and help empower them so that they have um, you know, both a sort of a safe and productive um, you know, online experience. So I think it's, and, and we're very well supported in the area of uh, cyber safety by, by our government and um, in fact today is uh, safe, Safer Internet Day yes. and, uh, and in Australia we're launching a new program which is uh, Think Before You Post, okay. which is, um, yeah. Great. You mentioned parents and teachers. Are you, do you find it difficult to have parents and teachers to teach them about digital media literacy and then talk to their kids about it? Do you find the parents and teachers at different levels than the kids or is it fairly similar in how you address them? Well, it, it can you know, vary depending on sort of the age and background and sort of education of, um, you know, of, of parents. Um, we provide a lot of resources online and then work with the education departments to um, ensure that those resources um, get into the hands of, of, um, of, of parents and, and teachers. Uh, research that we've uh, done indicates that parents are more likely to trust resources that, um, that come from, from government, mm. but they're particularly trustworthy and, um, and likely to also get them if they come through, say, a school newsletter. So, so we, we've established that that's an, an effective way to, uh, to provide resources, so we do that. We also have an outreach program, so we have trainers that, uh, that go out in, into, uh, into schools and um, work with teachers and also do some face-to-face, um, -face, uh, sort of usually sort of evenings with, um, you know, with parents as well. And um, working in the schools, we've got um, a number of, uh, of, of programs that, um, that are able to be used with, with children that are, that are kind of interesting and engaging. So one of them is called Cyber Safety, um, no, Cyber Smart Detectives. All right. Yeah. And uh, that's one that we've sort of uh, that's been developed internationally, and we've we've picked it up and launched now many schools. So thousands of children have had the opportunity to use it, and we're just about to undertake a major evaluation of that uh, that work, so that we are quite serious in ensuring that the work that the programs that we develop, um, you know, are effective. Um, and we will also be doing some awareness work with parents, and this is one way that we'll be able to gauge. Have parents um, found the cyber smart resources or, or not, and um, are they using them? Great. You mentioned in your remarks um, the <coughs> work that you're doing with the indigenous people of Australia to help preserve culture, and obviously, preserving culture is a major issue here in the Middle East. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing through digital li literacy in that area? Mm -hmm. um, the Australian Communications and Media Authority. Um, doesn't uh, doesn't have sort of particular um, you know responsibilities uh, in in relation to okay. um, to working you know particularly with you know, indigenous um, indigenous people and what I was um, talking about the, this morning was programs being undertaken by the by other agents of you know mm -hmm. of, of government um, and also in sort of academic and um, you know non-government sectors. To ensure that um, the stories from Indigenous people are, you know, are preserved, um, and then also um, there are other arms of um, government that with programs that are targeted at um, Indigenous and sort of remote communities. Mm. I mean, that's one of the difficulties in terms of um, ensuring that everyone in Australia has access to, um, uh, well, to broadband, ideally. Yeah. Um, is that some of the um, uh, both non-indigenous and indigenous people who are in regional areas has, has been a, you know a focus um, focus of government programs and indigenous um, communities particularly sort of supporting um, ongoing uh, provision of uh, of broadband is um, 
you know, is a is a concern of government and and is also is is something that's also being looked after. But it's not it's not our, our particular sure. um, our, our particular agency's responsibility. So I haven't got a lot of detail about that. But I think that that um, preserving Indigenous cultural heritage is you know, in the same vein as the work that's being done to digitise the cultural collections in, in museums mm -hmm. and galleries, um, in government archives as well, so that they, that information is more readily available and is going to be available um, over time. Great. Final question, just to wrap up. Um, in all your, in your experience, do you have any advice for the Arab world as we begin to delve into building digital media literacy here? Um, well, I, I was very interested in Dr. Hess's um, you know, comments this morning about the um, under-representation of, um, of Arabic language mm -hmm. on, the, um, you know, on the internet. And I'm, I'm sure part of that ref well, reflects the fact of fewer users. So I think the important thing is, uh, well, there's many important things, but one of you know is education and starting um, in sc in schools, um, and then that you know flowing through, of course, to um, higher education, uh, is that there's a good a good grounding in the use of um, digital technologies, uh, and and to establish that sort of basic understanding of how they work, so that. You know, I think I, re I referred to in my speech that, that need for adaptive um, learning strategies so that um, as the technology uh, advances, you've got a, you know, a grounding that you've you know, got in school, that you've had the opportunity there to, you know, to learn and then you can sort of take, that, um, take that forward. Um, of course, I suppose you would also be um, interested in in letting those who haven't had the opportunity through, you know, through education or work, um, learn how to use the internet and you know use mobile, if, even if it's on mobile. When I, you know, say say the internet, of course, um, you know, mobile um, devices are going to become, uh, you know, just sort of so important. Um, and and there, I suppose, it's um, perhaps a matter of those agencies who have responsibility for community learning or, um, you know. Edu education um, outside of the, the schools can you know, look at other effective you know programs in in other com you know in other countries whether or not they be in you know libraries or you know community centres initially really to give people access to sure. to the technology if they don't have the opportunity but then developing you know higher level of skills and yes just giving people the you know the opportunity to to explore and understand computers and the internet and um, and, and help, I suppose, make them afford, make make you know, help support their affordability as as well. And I think that, um, well, that will of course go a great deal of the way. I think to addressing um, sort of the representation and the um, inclusion of our content on um, on the internet. Right. Thank you so much.